Okay, folks, and this is uh, week two, of course, of the online version of the course. And right now, uh, my interest is in uh, making sure that everybody understands the basics of photo modification, retouching, composite images, and that sort of thing. And uh, I don't claim that this will be an exhaustive uh, demonstration, uh, but I did want to bring up a, a few key points and uh, show you some useful tools. So for photo modification, the important thing to understand is that just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. So, for example, tap here. For example, let's talk about reality for a minute. Now, photography sort of has a sacred trust. And that is, uh, well, let's go, if we go back to the beginning of the civilization. You know, back to the cave paintings and things like that, and the whole history of art. Originally, a very long time ago, uh, the people who chiseled the images onto the wall, they were literally trying to preserve history. And when we go into people like Leonardo da Vinci, you know, the great painters and sculptors, same thing. Their main job was to represent reality. Now, when photography appeared, uh, which kind of started in the 1600s, uh, and uh, really appeared in a more practical sense around the turn of the last century, suddenly the artist was kind of uh, relieved of that responsibility because the photographer was really the only one that could preserve reality perfectly. That's what the camera was for. And so the reason I say that is because I think there's still an implied trust in the photograph as being a representation of reality. So therefore, uh, now that we have the ability to basically violate that trust flagrantly, I, I, I worry that we're going to lose something. So what is real? Is a photograph real? When you look at a photograph, is that real? Well, now you don't really know because it's possible to make almost anything look real. The philosophy of photography, the public trust, and uh, who cares? You know, the idea is, you know, now that we can do it, let's go ahead and do it kind of like Jurassic Park, just because we can make dinosaurs, assuming we could, doesn't mean we should. But at the same time, that is something that you are going to have to decide. Every photographer decides whether or not they feel they have the right to retouch their images, whether they have the right to make images of things that, that wouldn't really be seen naturally. And uh, that, is, that will become a part of your style. Now, fixing errors. Let's, let's talk about that one, because I think most photographers can agree on the idea of fixing errors. Uh, and this would be, you've got a photograph, something is wrong with it. Uh, there was something wrong with the actual image. Maybe there's some digital artifacts. Uh, I would think that most photographers would think you have the right to remove those and touch them up a little bit. Uh, portraits obviously did. Uh, you can remove scratches in the surface of an old photograph, for example. Uh, things like that. Uh, and we're going to talk about the healing brush. We've already demonstrated that in, in one class setting. Uh, but it is a very useful thing to know, and it does have some very good uh, qualities. Now, adding or taking away things that were actually there, that's another matter altogether. That gets a little bit beyond this. Uh, but hypothetically, let's say that you took a picture and uh, there was something distracting in the background that you didn't see. It becomes possible to remove that, whether you should or not. And I would say it, sometimes it, it can be a deal breaker. In other words, if the photograph, if you can't take the photograph again and you really want it, uh, that would be something that may be on the edge of what you should do, but it's still there. Multi-layered composite pictures. Uh, there's one style of that that, that uh, I feel could be considered genuine, where you're literally uh, trying to make the sky have the same tonal value as the ground so that you can get full detail out of everything. Uh, that's a possibility where you would expose one image for the sky and another image for everything but the sky, uh, and then you can combine them. Uh, I forget what that's called, but you know, that is a, a, that's one of those things that's, that's coming into play now it's becoming very possible what we're doing i would say that that would that would be within the philosophy that we've talked about now the abstract there is when we know we're not uh, we're not being truthful so if you're going to create other worlds 
basically what you're doing there is you're saying this is not reality we're not pretending it is uh, it may be based on reality but we're just going to have some fun here as long as everybody understands that that's what it is then you can do that and i'll show you some examples of how we could do that in this lesson color correction is something that um, is much more practical we, we have to do this sometimes especially if we have uh, color images uh, because back in the days of, uh, of film uh, color color dyes were not perfect and sometimes they would change over time and so digitally we can restore them so we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, sometimes this can have to do with the actual material of the film and it can generate its own little problems and even to some degree digital photography can now one of the ways that we can do this is we can work on the brightness and contrast uh, which is sometimes called the luma we can work on the luma of a photograph by making it making the the bright areas maybe less bright or the dark areas brighter and sort of managing the image and that's relatively easy to do uh, it's also possible to do it wrong and i'll show you exactly what i mean by that now the color wheel and saturation uh, that's another thing that's relatively easy to do and all of these things uh, can fall within the realm of, um, of creative expression, meaning that you're not necessarily altering the reality of the photograph by modifying the colors unless you're deliberately making it look different than it was supposed to. Usually what you're doing is you're trying to make the picture look uh, more ideal. And sometimes, you know, that's, you know, the early photographers with the dark rooms, they were doing that too, to some degree. And full color correction uh, that's where we get into all aspects of the color, and that's about as far as we're going to get today. Okay, so in this first example, we're just going to talk about the basics of uh, fixing errors that appear in a photograph. And so this is a photograph, and if you were in class that day, we talked about this. This is a raw scan of some film. And here, you can see there's an actual error in the film itself. And the reason why that happened is because this was film that was accidentally exposed at least partially because the film backing which is made of the paper uh, contains these arrows that help you line up the film while it's in the camera and so apparently those actually got exposed onto the plate and so they only appeared in the first couple of shots and we'll show you how you can fix that uh, if that were to happen or if someone were to give you a photo and say could you please fix this uh, this would be what you want to think about. Also, uh, this was a scan, and the actual film grain may have had some issues. So what I'm going to do, first of all, to show you how good a scan this is, if I go to image size over here, you will see that that is almost 7,000 pixels. And so that is a very detailed scan. And so with that, if you look at the, um, at the current magnification that's a 12 percent and so the closer i get to 100 percent is what the scan actually is so if i start going in on this you know now we're at 16 percent now we're at uh, 25 percent now we're at 33 percent now we're at 50 percent now we're at 66 percent and this is what the uh, scan thinks of as 100 percent and if you look at the surface You'll notice this is what we call film grain. This is the actual material of the film, uh, which is becoming more obvious. Now, if we keep going further, you can see that it starts to um, it starts to lose a little bit of its cohesion. And so, there's a certain level where we can't really fix it, at least not without changing its meaning. If we stay at 100%, though, this, for example, this little white spot here. I'm going to call that an error. Now, that's either something that was on the scanner plate, or it could have been something that was on the film surface, or just a bad piece of film. And so I want that to go away. And so one nice little tool we have over here is this thing called the healing brush. The healing brush. And what this allows you to do is to make something go away. You see the little circle? If I click on, let's say, the smaller one here, if I just click on that, what it will do is it will average it out of existence. And so with that, 
I have the ability to kind of draw around these different things and make them go away. And so that would be to try to make the image more like what it really was ideally. And that's what we get with that. And so to actually go through and fix this, I would have to kind of pan around this and find all of those. And you don't really have to fix all of them, just the ones that stand out. And that looks to me like, like it was a defect in the emulsion, which is possible. Could even have been caused in the developing process. And if you're not using film, you're probably not going to see a lot of these, but you do find digital errors from time to time. And so this really is more along the lines of we're talking about uh, some major errors that are going to happen. Now, if we go to something like, like this, for example, if you look at that, you know, that's a big one. That, that could have happened on a, on a digital camera as well. This could be you know, kind of a, an abnormality, maybe something that even was there. So if I, I make that go away, you know, because what it says averaged in whatever was around it, and there you go. But if we look at, I meant to back up to see this, you know, if I hold down the shift key, or the alt key rather, I back up, you know, then I can see the image, and then we come to this. Now this is something that obviously is a deal breaker. If I want to use this image, I simply can't have that there, uh, unless for some reason I'm saying, hey, artistic license, uh, this is the arrow tree or something, and maybe I can pretend that I intended it that way, which I obviously didn't. Uh, but in the world that I live in, I would like to see that go away. So to do that, I may need some more help. Now, I might be able to do that with a spot healer, but I'd really rather not. What I'd rather do instead is go take my eyedropper here and find the color uh, that works. Now, the problem with this is this thing, if I go in on this more, this thing is going to, to pick up whatever you drop it on. So I go to the eyedropper tool again. And uh, the film grain can vary dramatically depending on where you've hit that. And so you may have to do this more than once. But let's say that I've got that, and then I go for a brush. I can then paint that away. Depending on where I get it, I can do it very effectively. Now you might notice, and this could be important, notice what's going on with the film grain. You may not be able to see it, but this is smooth, whereas this is not. Now, if I back up, hold down the Alt key, and keep on going back, by the time you get out here to what might be the final version, you might notice a little bit of a discoloration there. And I do. It's a little bit bluer, so maybe I didn't get their color right. So if I kick again, maybe I can try repainting that. Maybe that made a difference. It's a little bit lighter. I would say that that's probably a better fix. So if I can go back here once again, and I can almost say that that's completely invisible. And so maybe that's good enough. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the grain isn't there. So if I go to this one, what if I wanted to preserve that grain? Because a photographer often has these these realistic expectations. And I'm going to take myself out of the picture here because it's a little distracting. So there I go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and um, go to my eye. Now this time I'm not going to use the eyedropper. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a whole piece of the sky because I have the luxury in this particular situation of having, having a nice even sky. So there's my window there. You can see the marquee. And if I do edit copy, it's going to copy that from that layer. Now this is important because this could be a problem. Then if I go edit paste, you will see that I've created another layer down here. And if I move that layer, you can see I can literally paint over that other area. Now you might say, well, that's not perfect. You can see a little bit of a frame there. Well, if I stay on that layer, I might be able to get away with it if I use the smudge tool, if I can find where they're putting that these days. 
if I use the smudge tool, which is over here, it's part of this. And let's see if I were to make the smudge tool really big. And that didn't really work. You can see it kind of stretched that. So I'm going to control Z that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to erase the edges there. So if I go for my eraser, which is here, and that's a, that, that, you see that brush. Now, believe it or not, if you look down here, we're on this layer, so we're not going to affect the background. If I were to choose the background, I would literally cut to the picture. So I'm going to control Z that. I'm going to go back to this layer, and here, all I'm doing is erasing that, uh, that portion. Now, there's one thing to look at here. I'm going to control Z again. You can see that little corners come back. If I go up to my brush, these are the tools, the eraser selected. You'll notice the hardness is way up here because I was using this in another context at some point. I'm going to take the hardness down. That's going to, to be that the brush is not going to really clamp down. So it'll be a little gentler. So if I do that, notice that we can make that edge kind of disappear. So if you look down here, I'll just go there. And maybe it isn't perfect, but I would say it's pretty good. So then if we back us up, it could be that we just don't see that. Now, if we see it a little bit, you know, maybe we can um, we can change that a little bit. If we go to um, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and notice how maybe we can we can dicker with that a bit, and now it's basically gone. And if you poke it in the eye, make it come back. So that's the original error. That's the repair. So I would say that those are some ways that you can uh, fix obvious errors in a photograph. So let's say we've covered that for now. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at this photograph. So here we have Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty. Now that is a beautiful shot. And uh, it's actually, I don't really have a problem with this picture. It's already been filtered and everything like that. But hypothetically, let's say that I wanted to add a cloud. Let's say for some reason I wanted to change the character of the sky. Now this, this may not be something that you want to do, but let's say it is for, for the time being. So let's say I find another, let's say I want some of these clouds. Let's say I want one of them. I could go over here and I could choose a cloud that's, that fits my liking. And so I can check the marquee tool over here. And I could say, select this cloud. I'd say, that's what I want. And I can edit copy. Then let's say I go back to this shot here. And if I paste it, well, there's a cloud. And you might say, well, that's, uh, that's an obvious problem. Or is it? I'm going to show you a trick here that's, uh, that's been built into the program. Again, we got the background layer, which is the original image. Then we got the cloud. So this is normal. And if you allow it, you, if you allow it, you might be able to find something that works a little better. Sometimes you can use screen and get away with it because screen will, uh, will blend some of those background colors. In this case, it really isn't working. But if you adjust the opacity in that context, sometimes that might help as well. And this is kind of by guess and by gosh. Sometimes multiply works. Uh, that would be down, down here. In this case, no. So right now, we got a little bit of a, a difficult time. Let's say we, we leave that on normal. Let's see what we can do with just opacity. If we bring opacity down, then the, the cloud goes with it. Uh, fill, same kind of thing, or let's start, let's bring the opacity down a little bit, because I'm pretty, I'm not going to give up on this, and then let's do that trick with the eraser again, so, 
say I make the eraser even bigger. About the only way that I can get this to work the way I originally wanted to, because the colors were so different, is I would literally have to go in there and cut out everything but the cloud itself. So, but that's not impossible. It just takes a little more work. So we're going to cut the sky around the cloud, but we're going to leave the cloud itself in place. And if I do that, and I might say, well, you know, it still doesn't look real. Well, now let's see what the opacity does. Well, maybe it looks a little bit better. So then if I were to zoom back, you might say, well, big deal. There's a cloud there. Well, here's something else. Let's say we want to make the cloud a little bigger. So uh, we can go into the edit area and we're just going to transform that through scale. And there is our scale. So let's say I just hold the shift key, make the cloud bigger and then enter. So there's my cloud. I could also under that same area, let's say uh, rotate. So I can rotate the cloud, I can scale it up, move it around, anything I want to do. And you get the idea. Now, uh, that cloud wasn't there. So the moment I put that cloud there, I have changed the meaning of the picture. So I have to live with that if that's what I want to do. Now, here's another one I wanted to look at. Now, here we have this really tall building. And looking at this, I don't like this lamppost. So the question is, can I make that lamppost go away? And the answer is maybe, but maybe not. So this is going to be a challenge, but I think we might just be able to do it. So let's say I go in here, as I'm pretty sure I can take this color here. And let's, let's try it a really easy way. Uh, this won't work for the whole thing. And this, this, by the way, is a digital image. And so if I zoom in on this, if I go all the way to 100%, unlike the, uh, the film image, I'm not seeing any grain. Now I go all the way in here, and now it's down to pixels. I'm literally seeing the pixels, and uh, this image has no grain. It has none of that little sandy stuff. It was always just pixels. So the closest you get to grain is kind of a little bit of what we call artifacts there, which you, you can probably barely see. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to go ahead and use the eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to grab a piece of that sky. I wonder what the brush would do with that. And with a digital image, on the surface, it looks pretty doggone good. Except you can see it leaves kind of a halo. And so perhaps that wasn't the best approach. Control Z, Control Z. So it could be that. Up here it works, but I would have to keep on selecting it. I'd say we got it up there, but then maybe I would have to take the eyedropper again. Wherever it keeps hiding, eyedropper. Let's say I do down here now, and then go back to the brush, and maybe, maybe that's a little easier. For some reason it's going wrong there. So let's say I go back to my eyedropper over here and brush that out and so we're getting there so i could do two competing brushes see i drop her one more time and let's see if we can't sort of balance that somehow now let's say we've we've done that for the moment if we back this up we can see that we've uh, we've lost some of that lamppost. And you can see this white area here. That's from over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just going to grab some of this sky here. Image or edit copy, edit paste. And I'm just going to just going to cut that out there. 
And then, of course, I'm just going to grab my eraser. And it may not really work. And basically, I undid part of it. Could be that the only way to fix that, and uh, this is largely trial and error, and I won't spend all day on this. I just go over, say, there, and just put a little bit more paint there. I would say that there we've gotten it to the point where it's no longer screaming at us. And let's say I grab a piece here. Make sure I'm on the background layer. And I'll try to use this more strategically. Edit copy. Edit paste. And let's say I move that over. And if I put a little bit of that eraser there. Wish I could find these tools more easily. I can, oops, I brought some of it back. If I can just sort of snip it a little bit around the edges. And we can get to the point where we've done a lot. And so there we get to, uh, we get to this. And it seems like the paintbrush is the least painful way of doing this. You just have to kind of mix and match it a little bit. And we may have to do some cleanup work over there. And finally down here. I wonder what we can get there. So let's say we just paint that right out. So there, I'm going to say that we're not that far from it. I'm also going to say that if I was trying to be completely obvious that I don't think I've succeeded. But here we have the one little problem there, and that is that building. And so there, if we were going to continue to do this, we would have to be a little more careful. Let's say I go in there. And I literally want to take these windows here and make sure I'm in the background layer, edit copy, edit paste. And if I move that up, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. If I move that up, if I could find a way to match the pattern, I've almost got it. And I can use the arrow keys to fine tune it a little bit. And then if I use the eraser, you can see I can begin to reconstruct what was lost there. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because I think you get the idea. If we back up on this, we see that if we're far enough away, eventually we've lost the lamppost. So if you want to pretend the lamppost was never there, that might be one way of doing it. Okay, so let's move into the surreal, the surreal idea. Let's look at this image. And again, I, I might not do the whole thing here but I think it's, it's worth playing around with. Notice how the windows are reflecting the sky. What happens if we want the windows to reflect something else? And let's say I'm going to open up a new file here, and I have created, or I have found, uh, just this random piece of uh, crazy stuff. And so, in fact, this is probably not even very usable unless I make some adjustments. So if I go to image size, I can see that's very small. Now, the fact that uh, it's a digital image, and so it doesn't really matter how big it is. So I'm going to bump it up, 1920, and right now it's 1920 square. Believe it or not, that will work. That will work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the computer to bump it up 
So we're not even seeing all of it. And then I'm going to select all of it. And I'm going to copy it. Then if I go back to this image and I do edit paste, then let's say I do that. Now this image is, is much smaller. I can even I can even bump it up again because the nature of this, uh, it doesn't matter if we lose resolution. You'll see why in a minute. Let's say I go to transform. And I'm just going to scale the heck out of this. I'm going to scale it up and scale it that way too. So now I have basically covered that image. And so you might wonder why the heck would I want to do that? Well, if you look over here and you see these, these two layers here, I'm going to, first of all, unlock the background layer. I'm going to put this below. And so there, you might wonder, why did I do that? Well, that, that means that this, this image is now hiding behind this one. So let's say I were to go in on this. Let's say I were to go to that window. And I am just going to have a field day here. I am going to make my marquee. And in this case, it isn't even perfect. Let's see. I'll try it again. Just grab a piece of that. And if I'm on this layer and I delete that, it looks to the layer below. So then, probably the better thing to do would be to use the eraser tool. And this time I want to have a little more control over it to make the size smaller. And you can see, if I wanted to, and this isn't necessarily the best way to do it, I am looking through that window. And so if I back this up, You could hypothetically do this. Now, another way you can do it, let's say we go to our magic wand tool. And I were to change my tolerance. Let's say I bring the tolerance up to 50. And I would hit my magic wand tool. You see, that's got more of it. And I could go to these windows. Let's say I go all the way to 75. Let's see what that does. 75 works. Okay, so 75 almost got the whole thing there. And I'm just grabbing some of these. And you can begin to see, if I just click on those squares and delete, you can begin to see what it's doing. And that one again. And that one. So we can even, who knows, maybe we can even keep the clouds in some of these things. So I'm doing it kind of fast now. Oops. So now that I've gotten that far, let's say I want to look at this. And you can see what I've done to the image. In fact, it's even got the beginnings of something really crazy. I could, I could even get around that brushwork there. And I could make the entire image have this surreal effect where I'm looking through the building onto something else. And so that would be an example of photo modification. I'm not sure if that's what you want to do, but you can. Okay, now the, um, the last example I wanted to do is a simple color correction. Now I want to look at this one here because this one's got some problems. And so uh, this... Uh, this image was uh, taken in what I might, I'm going to at least call temporarily the purest fashion, meaning that I took the picture. This is what it, uh, it scanned out as. I didn't actually try to correct the color. Uh, now I'm looking at this and saying this color needs some serious help because the sky was not really that dark purple and the contrast is too high. So there's a lot of work that can be done on this one. So to do this, if I go to the image menu, and I go to adjustments, I've got a few things. Now let's start with the basics. 
let's say I wanted to do brightness and contrast. Then you get this dialog box here. And if I bring the brightness up, what that's doing is that's lightening the lighter colors, basically bringing everything up at once. And so the darks get brighter and the brights get brighter too. And that's not always good. But let's say that helps a little bit. Now the contrast, what that does is it squeezes or lengthens the range of colors. So if I bring the contrast up, there's less gray. If I bring the contrast down, there's more gray. So it's kind of muddy. And so generally speaking, those work together. You, know, you would want to make sure that you're not losing any detail. And of course, you can always turn off preview. This is what it started at. This is what we got. And so right now, I'm going to actually going to leave this alone because I think it needs more help than that. So I'm going to go to the magnify in case that becomes relevant. So another thing we can do, and uh, if we go into our adjustments, if we go to hue and saturation, uh, that is another place where you can, you can do some work. Now the color wheel, just so you can understand this, uh, this is a very, very basic way of modifying color. There's really only one control here that you can use at all, uh, valuable, and that is saturation. If you can picture this stripe here bent into a circle, that's the wheel. On the top of the wheel, you've got the warm colors. As you go down, you go into the cooler colors, and eventually you come on this other side here. So if you rotate the wheel, what you're doing is you're making the cooler colors warm and the warmer colors cool. Now, if you were to do this, if you were to just basically send this out basically it looks like someone's gone completely insane i would say that if i saw this picture uh, i would say that I, I would not be impressed with that technique because really anyone can do it and uh, if you were ever a kid playing with the controls on a tv set yeah you can make it look like crap but why would you want to all right so we're going to put this back where it was so i'm going to turn that back to zero and so Go back to uh, hue and saturation. And so not making any hue adjustment. Saturation, on the other hand, takes you from the center of the wheel out. So if, you're, if you go in, notice how the color errors don't seem so significant because what we're doing now is we're removing color. If we take it all the way in to the center of the color wheel, we've got black and white. If we take it out to the edge, then the colors become cartoony and exaggerated. Sometimes just bringing the saturation down a little bit can help. So you see the preview. I would say the desaturated one at least looks a little better than this one, but we're not going to do this because the real problems here have to be fixed internally. And so that would take us to what we call color balance. So the color balance, we've actually got a lot of controls. And we're going to look at these as we go along. Now you'll notice that there are three presets down here. Tone balance, we got shadows, midtones, and highlights. So sometimes it helps to start with the midtones. Because what I'm seeing is there's a lot of extra purple here. So I'm going to look at the blue and I'm going to move this a little bit. Now notice that's, 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 that's bringing out some of those greens in the Statue of Liberty. If I move this one here, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at that area there. I'm thinking that looks a little better. And this seems to be fixing the sky a little bit. So that gives me like a snapshot of about what I think the picture may be needing. So then if I go to the dark areas, if I had shadows, now shadows, we get to do this again. So if I go back to midtones, I could see that it really helped to move this blue down a little bit. Here it doesn't seem to be having the same effect because maybe that's not where the correction was the worst. What happens if we look at this? The reds, maybe not so much. Maybe the problems here are in the lighter areas, but this hasn't done much harm. So if we, if we, uh, so if we de-preview it, maybe it looks a little better. But I'm going to think the highlights are where we got some real problems. So 
here, maybe just a little bit in this direction. Here. And if we go back to the midtones, maybe we've done a little bit too much there. And the shadows, finally. Now let's see if we've made any improvements at all. That's what we started with. That's what we got. I'm going to say that's a little better. And maybe then if we add some of that brightness and contrast, we can get a little bit more detail back. And then finally, if I just take out some of the excess saturation, I'm going to say that that's a better version of the picture. Now, I could play with this all day and, uh, and not get it any better, or, or get it what I feel is better. But I would say that that's at least closer to what the true colors look like. So that's what you can do with the color controls to improve on your photographs to make them more lifelike. So there you go. Uh, that is something to think about for this week. And so what I want you to do is to look at some of your pictures and maybe find something that you can improve on.